tired, very tired. Of course, this is our first time under sail at night for quite a while. Uh, it's taken a bit of getting used to, if I'm honest. Haven't really slept. Um, and the boat is being thrown around quite a bit. It's sort of the waves are just coming over the sort of hind quarter, not quite running with the wind. So, <laughs> look at that, it's ridiculous. In the last episode, knowing that the remainder of our 1300 nautical mile passage would be offshore and through remote islands, we made the most of Bali's luxuries. Reluctant as we were to say goodbye to the all-round protection of Banyuwedang, it was time to sail to the eastern edge of Java from where we would make the long jump northwards. Today's trip to the anchorage of Buluran would once again mean taking advantage of those southeast trades. With the engine on for a few moments to weigh anchor, we soon turned it off to enjoy the peacefulness of well-set sails. worth just mentioning this encounter with a, a tug that we've just had. It was difficult to tell which way it was going. We could see Wake at the front of it, but we could see no sign of the tug. And when we looked through the bins, I could see what looked like the tug's tower behind it. So effectively it was going away from us, but it, we seemed to be catching up on it very quickly. Anyway, uh, we carried on. Its transit wasn't changing, so we thought, well, it's going slowly. And then suddenly this really, really loud alarm started beeping, an alarm we've never heard before. So we're very confused. Anyway, it turns out it was actually Navionics. Now, my phone is dialed into the ship's navigation system, so it's reading AIS, and it could see the AIS target on Navionics on my phone. Um, and it was sounding a warning. It turns out, suddenly, the AIS target appeared that we hadn't seen, and it was heading straight for us. So, first of all, I have to say, actually, big thanks to Navionics for including a feature like that, because it was extremely loud and it got our attention. Uh, but the second thing is, is that this is not a tug and tow. This is actually a barge um, with a great big construction behind it pushing it along. So it's just one thing. So uh, now that we know these things exist around here, we're going to have a keener eye, I think, to look out for strange vessels like that. worth commenting on this volcano behind us. This is on the northeast corner of Java. Now I can't actually check the name because we have no internet connection. As you can see there is no development here. There's a few fishing villages but there's no uh, internet, there's no towers. I assume there's a road there. But what I can see is that this is called Balaran National Park. So it may be that this volcano is called Balaran. But the reason why I wanted to comment on it was because of all the volcanoes we've seen. This is the one that perhaps looks most like a volcano because you can see the whole perimeter. Um, it is a proper crater. It's really quite impressive. When I look at those things, I always wonder, has anyone trekked up the top there? I'm sure people have, but uh, it's pretty steep and it is very desolate. There is no development here at all from what I can see. The tight entrance into this anchorage was tucked behind a reef. Still, with an intense midday sun, we could clearly see the perimeter. As the afternoon wore on, so the tide dropped and the old fisherman appeared on the reef. Aside from these lonesome figures, there was no one here, and it's these kinds of anchorages that we relish. Surrounded by nothing but reef, sand and mangrove, it's the perfect setting to take in Buluran National Park, with its impressive volcano perched on the northeast corner of Java. It was tempting to get the kayaks out and explore, but we only had one night here, with a big day tomorrow. So instead, we took in the sunset as we dozed in the cockpit.
next day was a fair old run of 50 odd miles. Fortunately, the winds were with us and we made good progress. We moved fast enough to get to Ban Ras on Gili Liang within daylight. Since this was to be our last day hop for the next few hundred miles, a good night's sleep was in order before going out into the open waters of the Java Sea. We're about a quarter of our way through our journey out into the Java Sea. Actually, I think this, isn't this called the Bali Sea? Anyway, That's it's where the Bali Sea joins the Java Sea. Surrounded by big ships, a few fishing boats, and we've got a, who knows how strong the wind is, 15 gusting 20 southeasterlies. We've got the uh, Yankee pole out. We're doing anything between five and a half, six knots. Could be going a bit faster, but don't want to really. We need to time our arrival, that's Barween, our next destination, uh, for first thing in the morning. There we go. It's our first overnighter in a while, and I've got to say, it's a little bit rolly. We're going left and right, left and right. Um, so being in the galley is quite exciting. <laughs> I've spent quite a bit of time putting things away properly and uh, it's all good. So we started at 8.30 this morning. Time now is 3.30 in the afternoon and we've been sailing the entire day and hopefully we will sail through the night but we don't, you never quite know what's gonna happen at night. Quite often the winds die um, and as we go further north towards our destination, Jamie's told me that it's likely that the seas will die a bit as well, but we'll do what we can. Um, yes, it's good to be back out sailing again, but I just wish it was faster and flatter. <laughs> Other than that, it's great. As the sun set, full moon rose, and we began our first overnighter of this journey. Just coming into about three o'clock in the morning now. That's what you can see there is a tug. I don't know if you can see its toe. Yeah, you can just see it underneath that cloud there. And uh, that was a close call. He's doing one knot, which makes looking at the AIS target very difficult because I set the lines of my AIS targets to relative, which means that they tell you where the uh, um, vessel's going to be after a certain number of time. Anyway. When they're going really slowly, that becomes a very imprecise measurement. Anyway, tired, very tired, but look at this. It's, I think we're one day away from a full moon. It's been a pretty hectic sail, I have to say. We've been uh, hitting some good speeds, uh, all the while sort of, you know, just being quite tame with the sail because, um, you know, taking it nice and easy, but of course, this is our first time under sail. 
at night for quite a while. Uh, it's taken a bit of getting used to, if I'm honest. I haven't really slept. Um, and the boat is being thrown around quite a bit. The sort of the waves are just coming over the sort of hind quarter, not quite running with the wind. So <laughs> look at that, it's ridiculous. But look at that as well. One of the reasons for doing night sailing. Um, and there's a couple of more boats over there. Somewhere straight ahead is Barween. I think we're about 25 miles or so from our waypoint still. And uh, we should be arriving, at, well, just not just after first light, an hour or two after first light. So just as we planned. Looks like daylight, doesn't it? It's ridiculous. This is a completely new place for us. It's what we love doing. We love, love discovering new places. And this is the island of Bawian. Not quite sure how to pronounce it. It's sort of in the middle of the Java Sea between Java and Bankabalatung and Kalimantan to the north. Uh, it's kind of right out on its own. It reminds me a little bit of Engano, which is the southernmost um, island of the Mentawis. Very sort of remote and uh, it's really green, it used to be volcanic, but it isn't any longer. And you can tell when you look at the mountain size that the, the it, there's, no, there's no forestry, I mean, there's no forestry, planned forestry, there's no farms. It just looks all rugged and beautiful. Well, I think we're blessed to be able to come to somewhere like this. Looking forward to making this stop a bit longer than the previous two. Here we are on Dbawin, which is slap bang in the middle of the Java Sea. If you look at the Java Sea, it's the one little island on its own. It sort of sits directly above Surabaya, which is on the end of Java. Um, I wanted to just quickly tell you what we're doing today, but the problem is, is that it's a Sunday, and every man and his dog, and girl, and wife, and uncle, and aunt, and grandpa, and granddad are on their scooters today, so they keep buzzing past. I've got this theory that they go for a cruise around the island every Sunday to music because they were led by a truck with a massive PA system. Lots of smiles and hellos and one of the reasons why we wanted to come here is that it's not touristic at all. There is no tourism here. If anything it's just commercial shipping because we are anchored in among a whole load of tugs and containers and barges just out there. My name? Yeah. Sam Sulumu Arif. Sam Sulumu Arif. Yes. Okay, you're from Bawin. Yes. Okay. I've been going to England before. Yeah. Have you? Because I'm seaman. Ah, good. MSG. Right. This company. SG, yes, yes we know. MSG. Yes, yes, we see that. It's a container company. Yes. Going to Felix Yes, Felix Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Felix also, Stowe is yes. near my home. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're home. Yeah, my home oh. near Felix Stowe. Yes. Flex too, yes. because I'm container special. Okay. So this is your restaurant? Yes. Small shop. Little war room? Yes, war room. <laughs> okay. We'll come back for a tea. We walk? Okay. And then come back? Okay. Yes. yes. Thank you. If we will go to market, uh, better you early morning, about uh, 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. 
Okay. It's open on the market. Well, if it seems like to this time, I think nothing. Nothing. Yes.